Hi, my name is Rob, and I'm here today to talk about fast data management. Now, we've already talked about the differences between slow data, the data that you absolutely must get right, your ingredients, regulatory data, shipping data, logistics data, things like that, and fast data, which is information that changes in the market very quickly. The product titles, image galleries, descriptions, search optimization, things like that, right? So these are two different types of data that require two different types of governance within an organization. If you haven't seen the fast data versus slow data video, it's only five minutes long, go watch that first before this one. For if you have seen it, we're gonna dig into a little bit more about what's required from a technical requirements perspective in order to manage fast data effectively. So first of all, fast data changes very rapidly. We've already described that before, but it changes very rapidly dependent upon the consumer or shopper or buyer touch point. So let me just give you an example. Lowe's, the retailer, a few months ago introduced a new attribute that's called dishwasher safe for washers. Like a washer is a, a, a piece of metal that you use with screws. In, it's sold in the hardware aisle. There's lots of different sizes of them and so on and so forth. People have been making washers forever. And so you would think that you would know every single attribute in the universe that you'd ever use to shop for or buy or sell a washer. It turns out that Lowe's, using consumer research, has discovered that dishwasher safe is something that people care about and tends not to be part of the product descriptions and specs that manufacturers of washers produce and merchandise their products with. So Lowe's started requiring the attribute dishwasher safe to be filled out for every product in the washer category. That type of change, a retailer by retailer, or search engine like Google versus Bing, or social media platform versus social media platform, and so on and so forth, is very volatile. They, these new attributes come up all the time, and the requirements around the attributes come up all the time. So the fast data, as it's changing there in the market, changes independently in different places. Lowe's is now requiring dishwasher safe, Amazon doesn't require it yet, and so on and so forth. So there's a major difference in, in the structure of these things. Slow data is one size fits all. Slow data is universal. You might have to reformat it in order to send it to a specific retailer. So a retailer, for example, might have all the dimensions, width by height by depth, within a certain product field, like one product attribute with X's in the middle of them. Or they might break them out into three different attributes, or they might want them to be imperial, or they might want them to be metric. There's a lot of different, different ways a retailer might ask for them, but those are really just basic transformations. Fast data might be different in kind. It might be different in, in attribution, right? So that difference has major implications on how you manage it. If you don't have a system that is focused on fast data management, the way that it gets managed is that it doesn't. If Lowe's asks for dishwasher safe, what ends up happening is the sales rep for Lowe's goes into Lowe's supplier portal system and keys in the data by hand, product by product. In the middle of keying in the data, they might have to shoot an email over to product and say, hey, this washer number 123578, is it, is it dishwasher safe or is it not dishwasher safe? I can't find it in the manual. And so they are creating a potentially valuable data asset, which is whether every single washer in the entire company's portfolio is dishwasher safe, and they're sending it only to Lowe's and they can't reuse it anywhere else. So the way that fast data management usually works in an organization today is in this siloed approach where you're just entering the data once and you have no capability of reusing it. If you are a brand manufacturer, this is a huge missed opportunity. What you want to be able to do, even if Amazon isn't asking for dishwasher safe as a thing, you might want to add it as a feature bullet, or you might want to put it in the product title, or you might minimally want to jam it into the product description or put it in the enhanced content so that you could start getting search hits. Maybe you want to experiment with ads on Google for dishwasher safe washers, for, for instance. There's lots of different things that you could do across your organization from a merchandising and branding perspective to utilize this new bit of information that you've learned. But if you don't have a system that's helping you manage the fast data that starts retailer specific, then you're losing all those opportunities. So first and foremost, the number one thing that you've got to be able to do is you have to have a place to store and track and govern these new attributes, these top off attributes, these attributes that your business might have thought of as non-strategic and one off previously. You need to be able to capture the fact that they're asking for dishwasher safe. 
you need somebody to be able to go back in there and say, what are the new attributes across all of my different retail channels and search channels and media channels that people are asking for recently? Which of those do I want to reuse? If there's an issue on Lowe's where someone's complaining about a washer not being dishwasher safe that is, is dishwasher safe, who entered that information? When did they enter it? Was it done by your employee or did the buyer at Lowe's do it on your behalf? How do you even track that down? Who's liable? Your fast data management system from a core architecture perspective has got to be able to store that. And one way that you can do that is you can make sure that your system makes it easy for the reps in the context of individual channels to be able to store data that is channel specific. If Lowe's is asking for a bit of information, you don't need to have a committee meeting about whether there's a new attribute that's got to be stored somewhere in your master data management system or stored in your PIM somewhere, and what categories within your taxonomy should it be attached to, and blah, 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 blah. You just want your rep that's working with Lowe's to be able to enter the data, store it, track it, period. Then you can make a decision later as to how it fits in with the rest of your corporate architecture. So the core observation here is that there is a distinction between retailer requirements, like Lowe's requirements, and your core data. And in particular, I will state that Lowe's has its own taxonomy, its own schema, its own category structure, with its own attribution attributes associated with each of the layers of the category structure, and their own validation rules. And what you want, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to take the Lowe's taxonomy as almost a lens on your own data, and you want to be able to layer it on top of it so that you see a version of your data, which is the Lowe's data. You don't want that to modify your core underlying data. You just want it to be a lens on it. And it might have, you might have attributes that are specific to Lowe's, you might have versions of attributes that are specific to Lowe's, but it's still a version of your core data. Similarly, if you're selling to the Home Depot, or you're selling to Granger, or you're selling to Amazon, so on and so forth. Each of them have their own schema. Your own direct-to-consumer strategy, your own website, has its own schema. Each of those schemas is modified and managed independently of the rest of them. And the data that you store centrally has different, maybe, versions that are associated with each of the schemas. So from a fast data management architecture perspective, this type of view of the world where you're separating the schemas and the schema management from the data storage and data stewardship and governance is required in order to do what we're talking about here, which is to store fast data in a way that's centrally managed but can be modified within the context of a channel as quickly as the market's moving giving you the option to reuse it across channels, and also without having one channel's data pollute the requirements and the versions of data across all the other channels, unless you intend it to. I hope that's helpful. This stuff is a little complicated. I know this was more of an academic whiteboard than we usually do. But fast data management is a new concept in the industry, and we're all trying to figure out how to describe it effectively, how to manage it effectively, and, and how to build systems to succeed in, in doing this management.